Okay, so I want to do a real quick video detailing the entire process of installing all the software that's going to be required for this course. I'm not really going to go through using the software quite yet and setting up any of the projects. I'm going to do that in a different video. This, I just want to detail how to get things set up and kind of what things should look like. I'm going to be doing it on a Linux system, but I will at least detail the files and stuff that you need on a Mac OS or a Windows system as well. It's not going to be one to one because I'm not using those operating systems because I'm like doing the recording setup on those and all the other different processes when I could easily just say, hey, here's the files, here's what they look like, this is what you'll need to do in terms of actually testing the software, then there are a few nuances that you'll have to take care of, but I will address those. So for now, let's just go ahead and swap over to my Codeberg, which is basically um, a decentralized version of GitHub, but I digress. It's essentially just gonna be a landing page for the download links that you'll need. I will have this linked in the video description down below to get to this page so first things first this is not something you download but this is what the actual course is based on is going to be Nanda Tetris so this course utilizes this online course at least about half of it and then branches off to a different path because we don't have enough time to go through the entire course so we will branch out around chapter I think five or six in the official course for the software I've added a few new projects as well as altered some of the earlier ones so there is a software link here with the original Nanda Tetris projects and you can download them and go through them download all their uh, let's see I think it's uh, the, uh, <laughs> the site's kinda not amazing yeah, I think this is where their, uh, their slide and stuff are. I will have all these available on the the repository here as well in the future. I'm going to clean this up. It's going to be more than just this uh, landing page. With uh, I have the these software links are actually in the repository as well. So the zip folders are local to this repository. So everything that I have created is here. And then I have links to everything that is needed to run the software. And then also I have links to VS Code just because that is the text editor that I recommend. But we'll get to that in just a moment. So first things first is the actual software. So there's two links here of Nanda Tetris Windows and then Nanda Tetris Mac OS and Linux. When you download that, it's going to be Nanda Tetris Unix. I just specified if you're on Mac OS Linux and this is what you need to use. But it's basically Windows versus Unix and they have the way that you run software is through bat files or sh files so um, if you're in the know then batch files are going to be for windows and then the shell scripts are going to be for mac os and linux i'll touch on the two details in a moment but then the other one is nan to zip and that has a windows mac os and a linux release this is software that i've written that is used to kind of compile all the actual necessary files that are needed for submission and grading and this is just to make my life a little bit easier because I've written custom software to grade all the projects as well this takes what you guys have and what you'll be editing puts it in a format that I can pass into my grading software and just automate the process pretty easily so it just makes getting grades done and my life a little bit easier at the end of the day so I digress. Let's see. The rest of it is going to be uh, Open JDK. I don't care what version of JDK that you use, as long as you have something that is a working and b relatively recent. So I know that this software will work with some of the older versions of JDK, but I know I've also seen some pretty non-standard bugs. That happen with older versions of JDK. Now, whether you use the actual official ones from Oracle, you use maybe Microsoft's Open JDK. If you're on Linux, you use whatever your package manager has. The Timurin ones are the ones that are, I like to use the most. The Microsoft ones and the Timurin ones are the ones that I usually go to outside of whatever my package manager is using. 
And then we also have Python, and I have Python for Mac OS and Windows available. It's universal. Oh, right, uh, before I go on. So you're going to notice that we have Mac OS X64 and ARM. They do have ones for older Intel-based Macs, and then also the newer M1 and M2 Macs. So just choose whichever one is best for your system. If you don't know what you have, uh, just contact me, and I can help you find out if you don't know. And you'll notice the same thing down here for VS Code. But for Python, it's a universal installer. It'll work regardless, as well as the software that I've written as well. So if you don't see the differentiation here, generally it's not gonna be a problem. But I did want to at least uh, use both of these, or at least give you access to both of these, just at a glance. So some things are platform dependent, but I think everything should be good for what's here. We'll find that out later though. So let's see. We'll start with the actual software, I think. So, if you look right here, I have all this stuff downloaded, all those links. I have a good organization for Linux, for Mac OS, and Windows. Each one is going to consist of two different zip folders, one for Nat Tetris, and then one for Nat Zip. So, if we look real quick here, you just need to extract your zip folders. Um, not too exciting, but real quick, we'll look at Nano Tetris and Windows. So the projects are all going to be the same, consistent across every platform. The difference between the Windows versions and the Unix version is in the Tools folder, where you see in Windows we have the .bat files. This is how you run the actual Nano Tetris software. When you need to use, say, the hardware simulator, you'll just double click the .bat file or execute it via command line and it'll launch it no problem I think for the ones that we'll be using is mostly gonna be these first three these are the ones we care about the most so just have those accessible and you should be good then for and the zip this is software that I've written um, so it's the same format I just kept it kind of similar one to one you'll just double click the bat file it'll execute and you'll be good to go okay so that's Windows that one's the easy one and then there's one additional step for both Mac OS and Linux. So I'll go ahead and do Mac OS just because most people are probably using it that aren't using Windows. But if you look at it, um, if I do extract all, yada yada, Fernand zip app, this is going to be the AP, uh, the APP. Um, you can just run it pretty much directly, put it in your application folder, it should be good. One thing to note, if it gives you security issues, just right click on it and run open and it should get around the this isn't done by a signed developer. Uh, there'll be the same thing on Windows as well. It's like, hey, this isn't signed. You just go to more info and say run anyway. There's nothing malicious in it. Signing software is just kind of expensive sometimes and I haven't gone through the process or spent the money to do it. So I apologize. I'll probably get on that in the future. But for now, um, bear with me, I guess. But I digress. Uh, let's see. So Nanotetris Unix is, again, same projects. But then you notice that we have these .sh files throughout this. So these are shell scripts, bash scripts to be specific. Um, we'll do open terminal here for me. And you can see that I am currently opened in my current documents, Comport, Comport, Mac OS, and Tetris tools folder. So if I do LSYSL, you'll notice that it's listing all these files you see up here in the terminal. I'm going to make this a little bit larger. Hopefully that makes things a little bit easier to read. But one thing to note is if I try to run, say, Harbor Simulator, it's going to tell me permission denied. And if we look at it, this is blank right here. Where these have X's on the folders, we need our files, these SH files, to also be executable. So the easiest way to do that is to do chmod plus X, which is setting the executable bit, to a wildcard, which just means anything that ends in .sh. So anything that's folder ends in .sh can have the executable bit set. So we run clear ls minus l 
first thing you'll notice is in my configuration, my terminal, they all highlight green. But the main point is these X's are now set. And if I run H, it now runs the software. So that's how you run this software to get it to run. Not a big deal. So that's going to be back OS. And you do the exact same thing for Linux because just any Unix system, these shell scripts need to be set to be executable in order for you to run them. The batch scripts in Windows, don't have to worry about that. So we're speaking of Linux, so just take a look over here. Um, it's NAND zip is a little bit different, so let's extract it. And it is using the similar shell script approach. Same thing. Um, terminal here. That was my cell. Oh, well, okay. When I zipped it up, it uh, already set it to be executable, so I should just be able to run it. So at this point, I'm just going to run NAND zip and show you what it looks like. And it looks like this. It's got a load project, a save archive. It's going to have two panes here that show the files that are in your directory. And on the right side, I'll have the files that will be compiled and archived to be submitted. So it's going to remove a bunch of unnecessary files just to make life a little bit easier. But I digress. Go back. I'm not going to go over the Unix thing here. It is identical to what I just did in Mac OS. Actually, you know what? I will just, for clarity's sake and consistency's sake, I'll do the same thing. So just same thing. Open terminal here. Oops. mod plus x dot sh. Uh, ls minus l. They're all executable. sh. And then it runs the exact same software because it's both the same zip folder. It's not a big deal. Now, one thing to note is if you try to run any of this software without having a JDK installed, it will not work because the nanotextures tools were written in Java. The entire software suite was written in Java, so you need a installed version of Java. And the way that we can do that is by coming to one of these OpenJDKs that you need. So if you're on Windows, just go to this download link. And if you're on Mac OS, choose which one one your architecture is appropriate for. Download, install that. Once it's installed, open up a new terminal, like I do right now. So that's a new terminal. You're gonna run, real quick, it might take a little bit larger, Java, minus minus version, and you should get something printed out. So I'm just gonna, yeah, so I have OpenJDK 19.0, Point two, it's uh, actually Timurin version because I actually do use the Timurin packages in my package manager because I just I consistently like them even if I don't have to use them. But I think it's a pretty good version. Now, for Python, the reason we need that is a later piece of software that wasn't written by the Nana Tetris guys, but was written by a different professor here at our university. He wrote a new assembler. That was written in Python, so you'll need a Python uh, version on your system to get it to run. So if I run Python minus minus version, you'll notice it has 3.10.9 because that's the latest release in my package manager. So if you download these, it's packaged up. Both of these should be for 3.11. As long as you have something around 3.7 to 3.8, you should be good. Now. This is where we have a few quirks in the operating system. So one thing to note is if you run Python minus minus version on Mac OS, it more than likely will not work. And that is because Mac OS specifically delineates Python and Python 3 for legacy Python 2 and the original, and then Python 3 obviously specifies Python 3. So if I run Python 3 minus minus version, it's gonna tell me which version of Python 3 I have installed. But since I have a version of Python 2 installed, it's just going to say the exact same thing for both of them. So if you run Python minus minus version on Mac OS and it shows something like 2.7 point something, that's fine. Just change the Python 3 minus minus version and you should be good. Now on Windows, oh, this is where the biggest pain point will come into play. So if you use the installer, that I have 
on this website or this uh, particular web page, then it will be fine. You do need to, at the very start, specify there's going to go a box, like a little checkbox in the lower left hand corner towards the beginning of the installation pages that says add to system path. Please check that. That is going to tell Windows uh, that Python is installed and that you have access to it from the command line. That way when you're in Python in the PowerShell or command prompt we're using, it will know that it's there. Now, if you install it or have it installed in a different version or a different way, so maybe like through the Windows Store or something like that, then some versions to work or try that might work might be Pi minus minus version. Typically, you're not going to need to do Python 3, but there's a few different variations that may or may not work. But if you have issues with that, just let me know. The general approach that I've done in the past is just install, uninstall every instance of Python, Python Launcher, PyCharm, whatever you have on your system, and then reinstall it through the actual official Python installer that I have linked. Because I, the one I have linked is from Python's official website, so it should be fine. Now, the main thing that I care about here is I need to verify that you have a decent working version of Java and an up-to-date working version of Python. So these two pieces of software, I am asking right, screenshots for the actual submission of the project just so I can bet who does and who does not have an appropriate version of this Java or Python system because it helps me know are your issues later down the road caused by something you've done in terms of like maybe changing files, maybe uh, just developing the software or using it in a awkward manner, which has happened before, or is it the version of the runtime environment that you have installed that is just not that compatible with the current software? So it's just to kind of vet the process and make sure that, hey, I need to know what version you have so I can look at that, or you're good to go and it's something that you have done in particular. So it's just a little bit of work ahead of time to save a lot of work later on. Now, the last part down here for VS Code is, I won't say optional, a text editor, specifically a text editor, not an IDE, is going to be required because obviously you have to head, edit the code. I suggest VS Code for a few reasons. One, it's free and open source and that's always just a plus. And then two, the extensions on it are generally pretty good. There's one in particular that I like quite a lot, and I'll show that in just a moment. And then three, it works on every platform, so that's always good. But if you don't like VS Code for whatever reason, and honestly there are some pretty good reasons, but I won't get into it now, then this is also the pro other process of you showing a screenshot of what text are you going to use so I can say hey this one's okay to use or this one might cause some issues down the line so if you're using Visual Studio like the official IDE for Microsoft that's used for like C Sharp, .NET, C++ development with MSVC don't use that. Um, it has caused issues with people's projects in the past by just completely overriding a lot of project files and that is just no good and then stuff like Qt Creator is not going to be ideal Xcode is not going to be ideal just something generally pretty lightweight will be perfectly fine again VS Code has um, extensions that will add syntax highlighting to the custom languages that you'll be working with throughout the semester so I definitely recommend that um, yeah, that's about it for this web page. So real quick, I will on the screen. Give me one moment. Come back over here. I didn't mean to close this out earlier, but I want to kind of zoom this in. I'm going to go to the Linux one because I want Linux right now. I want to open this. Right click here. 
open folder with VS Code you, which is just a fork of VS Code. Ignore that. It's just a different version of it. It's the same software, same extensions, but this extension right here that I'm going to actually install. Actually, you know what? I won't install it just yet because I'll show you why I like it. So the project folders that we have here, let me just, uh, okay, that looks good. So project folders here, we have one through eight. Obviously, we care about one first. But you see that there's like these lines, and there's no icons, nothing like that, nothing too interesting. And yes, I know I'm currently blocking some of these files, but it's not too big of a deal. So this not .hdl. If we open this up, it's gonna say any workplace have extensions you hook with HDL files, just close out of this, not a big deal. But you see everything is just solid white text. There's nothing going on, nothing special. So if we come over here, and I do NAND, Tetris, and I look for one by Lewis. I hope I say that correctly. I hit install. Then I want to set the Tetris theme, exit out, go back up here to my Explorer, click that, and now everything has icons based on the comparison files, our hardware description language files, the HDL, and then we have uh, some test files here as well. So if I do HDL, then you can tell now we have syntax highlighting and if I start trying to type out it has some autocomplete stuff which is really nice and it'll have everything done just proper and it's honestly a really good extension so that is a lot to go over there's a lot of moving parts but once you have everything set up then it's just going to be manually editing these files running it through the software which will have a different video doing that and that's pretty much it. And then also using the Nanda Zip software I wrote to package it up and submit it. So hopefully everything that I've gone over here makes sense and isn't too much. It's honestly a lot more words because I'm talking about different operating systems, but whenever you get it down, it says download whatever is needed for your system, install it, get it running, make sure the Nanda Tetris tools are working, and get a text editor that you are comfortable using. And after that, it's just doing the projects. So hopefully that explains how to get everything set up. And then hopefully you learn something else. It'll be always nice. And yeah, I guess that's going to be it for me this, this video. So if you have any other questions, just let me know. Sound good?